Tori has done 16 transactions in her first 10 months. She's absolutely killing it. You will learn step by step on how to do open houses, how to build immediate trust with for sale by owners, even as a brand new agent. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it, all tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Welcome back to The Agent Goldmine. Here's what you can expect in today's show. You will learn step-by-step on how to do open houses, how to build immediate trust with for sale by owners, even as a brand new agent, and how to build relationships that convert. Today we have on Tori Borges. When I first met her, (laughs) I was like, how do you pronounce your last name? Because it's spelled B-O-R- G-E-S. And I was like, is it gorgeous? He goes, she goes, no, it reminds, it rhymes with gorgeous. And I was like, perfect. I'll never forget it. Tori Borges is a Coast Guard veteran who was active duty. And now she is a full-time real estate agent out in the Pensacola, Florida panhandle, where she serves a couple of different, those neighboring cities, but focusing on Pensacola, she house hacks, she's house hacked several times. That's how she's built her entire portfolio. And now she is working with clients who are looking to purchase and relocate PCS to that area. Being that she's prior Coast Guard, she does a lot of referrals, is looking to do even more. She wants to get you paid. So if you're, if you have any referrals out in the Pensacola area, hit her up. She is realtor with an I underscore Rose on Instagram. Tori has done 16 transactions in her first 10 months. She's absolutely killing it. So if you have any questions, hit her up and enjoy the show. Tori Borges, welcome to the Agent Goldmine. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Okay, Tori, you are out in the Pensacola area, Pensacola, Florida. You've done 16 transactions in 10 months. How? So they've come a little bit from everywhere. I've really focused it focused on open houses since the beginning of time. I was calling other agents trying to do an open house at least once a weekend, sometimes two a weekend, and just building up relationships with people. So hit the ground running with networking events locally for other for Asian groups, investor groups, and just people looking to learn about real estate. So I tried my best to really surround my pe- myself with people who are in the real estate industry or interested in getting into it. I would love to, if you don't mind, can we talk about open houses? Can you tell us about your strategy? I guess from the very beginning, because you mentioned that you are calling other agents to do open houses. Are you like targeting them for a certain reason? Or is it just kind of like whichever one catches your eye? And then I'd love to talk all the way through like your process. Sure. So there was definitely a learning curve with that. In the beginning, I was taking pretty much anyone that I could get. And I was getting a little frustrated because I would go to some open houses and no one would show up. (laughs) So I quickly learned that, okay, focus on homes that are, of course, priced right, in good locations, and hopefully close to a major road where people are driving. So I have like 20 signs, probably. I have like a couple flags now. I build a flyer for each one. And that's what I use also to kind of show that I'm doing real estate on my social media as well. Since I am only 10 months in, I was trying to get as many people as I've known from my past, anyone on social media who follows me to know that I am now a real estate agent. So I use that to kind of build up um, my credibility as well. But in the open house, I have really since recently focused from listening to podcasts like this, building rapport with people. And at first, I think I was a little salesy trying to say, okay, are you working with another agent? Like, what are you looking for? How long have you been searching? And I've really taken a step back from that. And I will, when someone walks through the door, I'll give them a rundown of the property, right? Like I kind of practice it, get a really like quick speech going of every detail of it. And I say, okay, go ahead, look around, let me know your thoughts. And then I'll talk to them a little bit more about what they're looking for. And, you know, I, I, of course, want to sell the house that I'm in. That's a big reason why I'm there, right? To help the owners market the house. But 
I also encourage people to maybe look at a house that's around a corner, offer my services to go open a door for them if there's another property that they're interested in. And that's how I get to know them a little bit better. And then I will reach out to them in the future. So I've gotten probably like three or four clients from open houses um, and yeah, some other like Fizbo's, but they've all just come down to building up some kind of credibility so they know that I know what I'm doing. And then, yeah, really just building a connection with them. With EXP, I find it that it's super easy to just find an open house, right? Like to be able, because EXP is so big, as opposed to maybe those agents that are in smaller brokerages, or maybe their teammates don't have a listing at the time, or maybe someone else has already taken up that listing. Well, how are you finding the open houses to even get in your foot in the door? So I will say I've had some listings myself. So some of them have been my own and I try to do as many on my own (laughs) as possible. But yeah, some people on the Five Pillars team here in Pensacola, I've done like a co-listing with, so that's helped. But yeah, just reaching out to clients that I meet at these networking events. And that's why these are so important. At first I was like, why would I want to go meet with other agents? Like they're my competition, right? Like what am I going to get out of that? But there really is so much value to it. One being open houses to like, if you're in a multiple offer situation down the road and they recognize your name that you've had a conversation before and that, you know, the transaction is going to go smoothly and professionally, that's huge. So yeah, I'll ask agents that I've met and I think I approach it very professionally. You know, I explain who I am that I tell them like, I'll look, you know, into the property in detail and I'll tell them that, is it okay if the day or two before, like I ask out or reach out to ask any questions about the property? Like, what, what do you think is the selling point of this property to show them that I'm not going to make them look bad, make their listing look bad. And then I'm going to market it well, um, professionally, and that anyone who walks through the door is going to be treated right. How are, okay, so you've strategically picked your property using, you know, close to a major road, priced properly, blah, 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 all those things. And then you are securing the open house through these relationships and building rapport. Once you have the open house, how are you marketing it to actually get people to come and come through the door? So recently I started asking everyone coming through, did you see this property on Zillow or Realtor.com? Or how did you know this open house was happening? Because I've been asked that question before and I was like, hmm, why are people coming here today? So majority of the time people say, oh, I saw it online. So I will ask the agent, I try to schedule it like earlier in the week, whoever's listing it is, say, would you mind putting it on Realtor as soon as you can or Realtor.com, like Zillow, in the MLS, basically, you know, so it auto populates everything. I'll ask them to do that and I'll check it, you know, and be nice about it and be like, hey, I haven't seen it pop up yet. Would you mind going back in there? (laughs) So I make sure it's on there so that everyone could see it the whole week or most of the week so that they could plan out to come to my open house that weekend. I do make a flyer on Canva. I try to use like the same format with different colors, but a palette that I hope like kind of matches the branding that I'm trying to build. So everything looks organized. And I'll post that on Facebook groups, like local open house pages, real estate pages, and I'll put it on my social media as well. So at this point, okay, you've made sure that your marketing has been pushed out onto all of the online platforms, Zillow, Realtor.com, updated in the MLS. You've done your own marketing on your own social media pages and Facebook. You mentioned earlier that you have 20 signs. Do you put the signs out the day of? Or are you putting them out in advance? When did the signs and the flags come into play? I do it right before the open house because the last thing I would want is to put up signs early and someone come and me not be there. That that makes me look like so unprofessional. So I do put it up like 10 minutes before and I take them down right after. So I don't write the times on them. Like I probably should be doing that stuff and maybe it would be a good idea to do it the day before with the time and the date. But also like people are driving by and I don't want them to see a sign and not pay attention to it. Like I want them to see a sign go, oh, there's an open house. Let me turn. I'm going there right now because they're not going to come back. They're probably going to forget about it unless they're eyeing something on Zillow, like a house that they love, then they're coming. But I also try to save as much time as possible. So I do try to make these open houses as close to my house, but going there and doing an extra trip, you know, that's going to take, even if it's close, taking at least 30 minutes to go put up the signs, come back. 
So I haven't been doing that. (laughs) No worries at all. I'm just trying to map out like every detail of the process. So at this point, it's the day of the open house. You put the signs up and the, the flags. And then what other preparation in the house are you doing, if any? Like, are there snacks? Is there mute slow jams in the background? Like, or, or is it, what is what is the house like? Yeah, I keep it pretty simple. Of course, it's going to be clean. Like, I'll have paper towels and stuff with me if it's a mess. Most of the time, they're not lived in home, so that makes it a bit easier. I don't bring any snacks. I used to. It just kind of like, I thought it came off a little salesy. Like I wanted it to be casual and create an environment where people were comfortable and can talk to me and not think like, oh, here's a cookie. Like, can I be your agent? (laughs) So yeah, I I keep it really simple. (laughs) But I do like with the signs. So yeah, I have probably like 20 of them now. I put multiple on each corner. Like I don't want people thinking like, oh, is it down this street? Is it that one? Like every quarter I put a couple on to make it so obvious. <laughs> and that's what you need. Yeah, because otherwise people will get lost, especially if it's their first time in that neighborhood. No matter how simple that neighborhood might be. Yeah, the more signs, the the better, I think. And I love where where how many different strategies there are with open houses. You you seem to so far have like a a similar strategy to episode 64, which is Libby Earthman, which is like chill, you know, just like be yourself. You don't need to have like scripts memorized. You know, people can argue that each and every way. But yeah, I like your overall just just chill yourself vibe. So when people walk in, what does that look like? Is there a sign-in sheet? Do you say hello? Do they walk in? Do you meet them at the door? Some people are as aggressive as going to the door and be like, oh, hey, you're not here with your agent? Like looking around, where is your agent? (laughs) What does that look like when people walk in through the door? Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Allie the Agent and The Shelby Show. So I will say I did listen to that podcast by Libby and was so impressed by it. And I have implemented some of her ideas and that has encouraged me to kind of take a step back and like just be more friendly and relaxed with it. So that has helped. But I will sometimes meet people at the door and open it for them, give them like an intro, just like, hi, I'm Tori, like, welcome. And then I'll say, have you seen this house on Zillow? And that's, you know, where I get that information, how they find out about it. But then I also use that to lead into, okay, so you know, the step or like the specifics of this home, do you want me to give you a quick run through again? Or are you good? And then most times they say, yeah, tell us about it. So I'll just do you know, square footage, um, bedrooms, give them a quick layout. I'll be like, if you go to the left side of the house here, you're going to find the master upstairs, this, this, and this. I'll give, you know, the recent upgrades, like the highlights of the house, of course. And then I'll just say, so that's all like, please feel free to take a look around. I'll be over here if you need anything. And then they'll walk around. If they pass me, like I try not to make it weird. And I'll be like, have you guys been looking in this area for a while? Cause you know, I'm still trying to connect with them. So I'll take that opportunity And then when it's wrapping up, that's when I'll ask them to sign in. I do have a sign-in sheet with all my cards right next to it on a table. And I'll say, if you wouldn't mind leaving your name here, I provide updates with the house. If we have a price drop, if we end up getting under contract. So if you wouldn't mind leaving your information, I'll let you know if anything changes here. And then here's my card. If you have any questions about the property, I try to, you know, have a conversation with them at that point to see if you know, maybe there's a chance for me to be their agent too. <laughs> so and so that's you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> there's a chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. What, what kind of, you mentioned before that you say that you also try to open the doors for other homes nearby. And this is, I, I feel like a lot of agents overthink open houses, that they need to know every house that's on the market, like the square footage, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, because that's what the client is looking at, right? Like if they're already looking in that neighborhood, chances are, if they're not like just a nosy neighbor, then they probably, if this is a different geographic farm than what you usually do, they probably know the area better than you and the houses that are on the market better than you, if you got that open house on the fly. So it's, it's, I think like, I think agents just get caught up in that where all you need to do is just know one other open house. And if you want to be a baller, then know two other, not open houses, sorry, just two other houses on the market. 
Like, oh, have you taken a look at that one on 123 Maple? Or what about the one on 123 Farm Street? And you're just like, oh, they're like, oh my God, wait, like, you know, like the whole neighborhood. Like, no, I only know two houses. And those are the ones that I said, you know, <laughs> like, what does, is that the, kind of similar to what you're doing or was that just me? Yeah. So, you know, I always wish to be more prepared than I end up being. <laughs> I do try to know the neighborhood. Luckily, I've been doing a lot of the open houses in the same area. So I have an idea of that point. Um, but in the beginning, I didn't. I'm like, gosh, yeah, these you're right. Like these buyers probably do know more than I know about the area. But you don't need to know it all. Also, if they ask you a question you don't know, it's an opportunity to get their contact information. So I could be like, you know what? Put your number down. I'm going to text you in a couple hours with that answer so that you'll, you'll know. But I'm you know, whatever. But yeah, I'll, I'll know like at least one property, but I'll have a little spiel, like I said, about the property so that I'm building up like my credibility right when they walk through the door. Um, I do dress professionally too. Like I know a lot of people take the more like casual approach with their apparel. And that's fine. That works for some people. It's just, you know, what kind of client are you looking for and what are you comfortable doing? Like for a long time in the beginning, I was trying a little bit of everything and some things were just not mixing well with my personality. <laughs> and I think as a beginner agent, so many people do that. Like they think learning is great and it, it so is, but you can't learn it all. And then people get overwhelmed and just kind of shut down. So focusing on like a couple things, maybe a few more in the beginning so you could see what's working for you and what's working for your area. But yeah, you can't do it all. Like you got to get really good at a few things. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how you were able to test out and identify where your authentic fit is. It was funny that you say that you're more professional. Have we looked at Allie today? <laughs> Tori, look at it. Listeners, if you're not watching on YouTube, you got to go over to YouTube because the girl is wearing a button up shirt with a collar and I've never seen her look more professional in my life. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe she has an open house later. Yours, yeah. Tori. She's trying to look good for you. <laughs> but, okay, Tori. So you mentioned sign in sheet earlier. Are you doing a digital sign in sheet? And what is your process for following up with those people? So I tried the QR code thing in the beginning. I tried the Google form because I watched a bunch of videos and that's what people said to do. And it did not work for me. I think I did like one of my first couple open houses doing that. And like, no one filled it out, like not a single person. So it's like, scratch that. Also, like, I don't get their contact info. So got rid of that. It's a pen and paper, fill out your name, fill out your phone number. I haven't been very good about collecting emails because for a long time, I put myself in the buyer's shoes and say, okay, if I was walking into an open house or talking to an agent, like, what would I feel comfortable giving them? And what wouldn't I? An email is one thing that I would never write correctly because I didn't want anyone to have it. So I've kept that off. And now I'm like, mm, I got to find out a way to collect that because it is so important. But I get cell phone numbers. So I'll, you know, can text them, call them. I ask on there if they're working for a real, with a real estate agent. So I know and not breaking any ethics thing. And I'll also ask on there, how soon are you looking for a home? So it'll be like a checkbox of, immediately, like within a year, just looking, that sort of thing. So I'll kind of get an idea, like, should I reach out to these people and, you know, maybe send them a property follow up wise after the open house. Of course, if they ask the question, I'll let them know any changes. I will let them know. And if I like, sometimes I'll ask them to, if they, if I know that they liked the area, but ended up kind of being on the fence about the house, I'll check in and be like, so what were your final thoughts? Have you thought about like that house at all? And if they say no, I'll be like, okay, well, this one actually, I think would you'd really like and would fit your needs. So I'll try to send a property close by so that they could see it on their own terms and then reach out to me or, you know, I'll give them a showing. So I haven't really done that all too much. The clients that I have gotten from open houses I feel like I kind of know that they're going to be my client before they even leave. Like we just have good enough conversation and talk about setting up like an automatic search for other properties in the area before they even walk out the door. So that's been a little bit easier to reach out to them because I know, I know that they want me to. 
how many how many of your 16 transactions which in the last 10 months it's like what like almost two a month um how many of your transactions came specifically from these open houses i would say three so i will say with the open houses too so i've been lucky to have gotten some listings myself and i think a good strategy that has worked for me is coming soon on a wednesday maybe sometimes i don't really like the coming soon thing list on a thursday and market the open house you know from the second you're alive and have the open house on a Saturday. I typically do from one to three. So of my listings, two times from doing that, I've also gotten the buyer. So I've really like from two listings had, you know, like four clients. And I think so much of that is being personable during the open house that people are willing to trust a listing agent. You know, that's not even working for them um, to help them buy that home. So that's the timeline that I've found has worked. Um, and yeah, that's, I mean, that's so awesome if you could do that, because that would leave, you know, one person from another open house that I had gotten. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And okay, you're totally just like, so casually being like, oh, yeah, listings and these listings and these listings, and you have been an agent for less than a year. How did you even get these listings? D- were the open house, the three transactions, more listings? How did, how did you get these lists? Start there. So <laughs> the first one was fear of influence just from the beginning. I actually got the listing before I was even an active agent. I was like, oh God. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. um, yes, because I was telling someone that I knew because I was moving. I was still stationed in Washington, D.C., moving to Pensacola. I knew that it was all happening, separating from the Coast Guard. And I had seen someone that I had gone to the Coast Guard Academy with list their house for rent. And I was like, Hey, I'll be there in a couple of weeks. If you need help with anything doing showings since you're dealing with a move or you're passed down, like, please know I could help you. So then we got talking telling them that I was a real estate agent. And then a couple of weeks later, they're like, I don't want to be a landlord. Can you list my house? So that's how that one happened. The others have been Fizbo's really only one was like a true Fizbo that I reached out to and built up or like a rapport with that he called me. So I would say if I was to teach someone like a strategy of how to talk to a FISBO would be um, call them, you know, be super complimentive. I don't know if that's the word. Is that a word? <laughs> sure. Okay, About we make up words a lot here. It's, <laughs> yeah. Just, you just say it with confidence and then keep right. going. I know. I shouldn't have questioned <laughs> it. I should have just gone with it. But anyway, so I know this is like awful because I'm still within my first year, but I don't call people who have ugly houses. Like I just won't do it. I don't want it on my social media. I can't really, I'm not good at selling something I don't believe in. So <laughs> if I see a house that I would live in, I call them one because I also want to see it. Like I love looking at houses. And so he had a really cute house. I said, can I come look at it? You know, I, I'm always looking to buy and I just really love how it's decorated. I love the location. So then we just build a rapport from there. I do tell them, I'm like, listen, I don't want there to be any surprises. I am a real estate agent. I promise I'm not trying to convince you to let me sell your house because I'm sure you get a thousand calls a day from people who do. But I'm looking to help you find a buyer and to market your property. I'm building up my own social media. I want to market houses that I personally would recommend to people that I like. I want a certain brand, you know, with my business. And would you mind if I come? And then, like, we'll talk for a while. I'm normally there for, like, over 30 minutes just talking about the property, getting to know each other. And I'll offer a free open house for them and say, listen, do you mind if I come next weekend to give you some free marketing? Now, again, like, I'm, I'm not trying to get this listing from you. I just, I'm looking for a buyer myself, and I want something to market on my social media to show that, you know, I'm, I'm working hard and that hopefully I can build up my clients. So that's how the first one happened. And then from another listing, I had shown it to someone who was a buyer who ended up having a house for sale, but I kept in contact with him. And he was like, you know, 
we interviewed a couple people. We just don't trust them. And like, we trust you. We don't think that you're going to do anything shady and that you're going to look out for us. So that's how I got in the second FISBO and just, you know, it just kind of goes from there, but it all boils down to, yeah, connecting with these people, being credible. You know, of course I try to like add some stats and numbers in so they know that I know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I mean, I have standards that I hold for myself too, as an agent, you know, like I show up when I'm supposed to, I'm professional, like I'm fair. And I'm always honest with people. Like if they're being ridiculous, I try to offer another perspective. Like the FISBO, I know a lot of people are like, okay, that's what you want to list it at. Let's list it at. And depending on who they are, sometimes I'm like, like, sure, I, I can't convince you otherwise. Let's just do it and see how it goes. But I mean, I'll tell them, I'm like, there's no data supporting this price. <laughs> and I'll, you know, show them and just say, like, we could do it, but it's probably not going to sell. And I think people appreciate that. For when you are offering the free open house, that's a great line, by the way. Like, I promise I'm not trying to convince you. Like, I'm looking for to find a buyer for myself and to market your property. Like, great. Awesome. Do you ever like ask, like, if I were to bring you a buyer, would you compensate me 3%? Or do you just not even touch that at all? Yo, real quick. This podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. I guess we'll reshare that shit. I don't. I do like if I'm on a listing appointment where I'm already in their house and like they're looking to hire someone, I'll try to kind of seal the deal with saying, you know, I'm going to market the heck out of this. If I bring you a buyer, I'll give you a discount. I don't know if other people are doing that. They might be, you know, I might be saying that and everyone's like, yeah, duh. Like you're, you should like, of course be saying that, but I do like, and I kind of save that to the end. So I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of giving them like a discount almost or something that I am like sacrificing to make it work. And you've mentioned a couple of times now that, you know, relationships, building rapport, you know, those standards that you hold yourself to. So I think that those things are very important. I think Allie probably agrees that those things are very important and set you apart. But to me, it's almost confusing about how they're not more prevalent in our industry or just like with humanity. And I don't know, I'm curious about your thoughts of like, where the ability to build rapport and establish a relationship and establish trust comes from like do you credit any of that from like your previous experiences like having you know really whether it be in the coast guard or some people are like oh i was like a waitress or i worked at a summer camp and so i had a lot of experience like do you have past experiences do you think that it's something that is trained into you or do you think it's innate i do think it's mostly innate i will say like in the coast guard i had to work with a lot of people so that you know, taught me some strategy at how to connect and, and how to care for people. But yeah, like I got into real estate or being a real estate agent to help people. You know, I, I love looking at homes. I love renovation and studying the market as well. But I really got into it because I want to see people succeed and I want to help them. Like I get a lot of satisfaction from that. So I know not everyone's going to have that. And I think people, especially when they're starting, they're really desperate. And I have to say like over the 10 months, like there's been some times where I felt really desperate too, and like willing to take on any client, take on any listing, even if I knew it was, well, like one that I knew was going to sit. <laughs> but I was like, you know what, this, I'm going to learn something from this. So just do it. But yeah, I, I think desperation does show. And I am so much more about quality over quantity. So I'm trying to make myself better for my client because I'm in it for lifelong clients. Like I don't want this transaction to be one and done. Like I want them to come back. I want them to really feel like I help them get into a home that they're going to love or an investment that they're going to make a ton of money on. So yeah, I think a lot of it is innate. I think everyone does have a, a bit of that, but I think competitive competition, yeah. And just being desperate and scared for money make people kind of shy away from that and go the salesy route. Now, there are a lot of really successful people that are great salesmen, kind of pushy, maybe don't feel like they want to waste the time networking. And yeah, they're making good business too. You know, they're not going for the kind of client that I probably am though. 
And I just found that that works for me. Like one, I feel productive when that happens, but I've also tried the salesy route a little bit, like reaching out to people, telling them that I'm a real estate agent, but I would never feel okay with myself encouraging someone to be an agent for like a friend or family if I knew that I wasn't going to be the best agent for them. So like when I did first get that first listing, like I did not do that by myself. Like I asked someone to co-list with me because I was like, I'm not putting my reputation on the line when someone put their trust in me as a new agent to get their house sold for a great price and make the transition seamless. Like I will pay someone money to make sure that it goes well. Um, And I think people lose sight of that. Okay. You have, you're doing open houses. You are doing the networking, calling some for sale by owners, meeting people, building relationships, building rapport. What CRM, if, are you using a CRM? What CRM are you using? How do you feel about it? What's your frequency within it? Et cetera. Yeah. So KB Core, cause that's with EXP. I don't really use it that much and it's awful and I need to, I was like, I know I'm going to go on this podcast and get in trouble by Ellie and Shelby after. <laughs> Shame. Yeah. We'll, we'll be talking after this, Tori. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it's something <laughs> that I absolutely like need to get unlocked. I use Excel a lot. Like I have, you know, Excel spreadsheets of the clients, numbers and notes on all of them too. I have to say, like, I do have a pretty good memory, which is a blessing and a curse. <laughs> and I know that it's going to fail me as I continue to build up, you know, my database and, and connections. So that's a work in progress. But for all of you who do it, good on you. <laughs> I mean, you do we, have a system. We all should right? do it better. Yeah. 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 Right. We all can improve for sure. And you have a system like it just because it's like you started off on the Excel because KP Core is clunky as shit. You know, like it takes it's a very steep learning curve. I think it looks pretty because there are colors, but there it's it's not the most user friendly. <laughs> well, that's how I think pretty is colors. And <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, look at Shelby. Shelby was using Excel for, until yesterday and she was doing <laughs> and you guys are uh, both so true. It. Yeah. So that's all I wanted to say. I'm very proud of both of you. Of all of us. <laughs> I do use Google Calendar as well for reminders. So to kind of build like that connection and rapport a little bit more, like if I'm talking to someone and they tell me that their kid is going to college next week for orientation, like I'll put a note in my calendar to send them a text that morning and say, best of luck today. I know it's a big day for you. Um, like let's talk next week or something, or I might not even say like anything about me. I'll just let them know I'm thinking of them and that I'll, you know, remember a personal detail of their life and that I care about them. And that works. I mean, I did that. I still do that for a lot of things. Like my calendar reminders are so important. So what, and it, it feels like you are able to keep a really good grasp on things, but what other, do you have any other tools or apps or cheats that you use in your life to keep your shit straight? Yeah. So like, you know, most agents these days, I use Canva and I keep everything for like the flyers and stuff on there. Google Drive, I use a lot. That's where I keep like all my um, templates for like emails, checklists, that sort of thing. In terms of, and I have like a thousand, maybe not that, I have a lot of websites saved too, or like written down somewhere. I have a document with like all the links to everything. Cause I mean, we have to provide clients with data, right? So I use this really great house hacking calculator that makes charts and all this stuff. And yeah, just a bunch of calculators. Cause I don't, I don't like surprises for anyone. So like the county website, just, yeah, just different websites and and places to get information to provide to people because people like tons of info right that doesn't mean they have to read it all but you want to show them that you know where to get it and of course there's no surprises when they get to the closing table and and taxes are going to go up or the following year even like taxes go up thousands of dollars because there was a sale like a lot of people don't know that's going to happen they look at the taxes from the year before where it's like a thousand dollars because it's been um, homesteaded, you know, that's a tax saving thing here in Florida for 30 years. And then they get hit with a new assessment. Like that's some of the things I like to predict and show people so that there aren't any surprises. So that helps. 
I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about how you went from being an active duty officer to a full-time real estate agent. So you started off like part-time as a real estate agent. At what point did you decide I'm making the right choice? You know, like that is a big transition. Yes. So I was just like, I'm still deciding (laughs) (laughs) every day. Um, (laughs) Part-time real estate investor. I I was never a part-time agent. I went from pretty much, you know, active duty all the way to being a full-time real estate agent. So I knew for a while that I wanted to get into real estate. I started investing uh, like five years ago or so with a single family home, loved the renovation piece, loved again, like the customer service aspect of building or creating a home for someone, especially like military, if they're PCSing to a place that they've never been before, like I really strive for relatability, right? So even like with clients too, like how can we relate? So yeah, with my tenants, I would try to relate to active duty members coming to an area that they weren't familiar with. And I just loved that. So I continued to purchase and build my portfolio and you know, I kind of got tired of the day-to-day office grind of not really being passionate about what I was doing anymore. And real estate just kept calling my name. And it, it's kind of the perfect blend for me. I feel like, yeah, working with people, building relationships, being able to be innovative, like real estate agents are problem solvers. Um, there's going to be something in every single transaction that comes up or some hesitation and objection from a buyer or seller. And, you know, I think because I care so much about um, seeing them like succeed, I, of course, like try to find a way to make a win-win or like a happy medium kind of thing. So I do like being creative and trying to make something work. Um, So yeah, that's, I was just done with the Coast Guard. I was like, okay, real estate's it. Let's do it. (laughs) I I hear that completely. Yeah. I think, you know, like, uh, because I was in a similar spot a couple of years ago where I was active duty and also a real estate agent. And I am glad that I liked being a real estate agent, but I think even if I didn't, you know, or even if I didn't make the amount of money, I still would have left the air force. Like when you, you can, you get to a point where you just know you need to leave your W2. And like, (laughs) even if you take a reduced 50% pay cut, like you might still be happier. I love the flexibility of it. Like, yeah, I'm working seven days a week. Like, you know, sometimes, well, mostly every day, early morning, sometimes late nights. But if I have to go do something to take some care of something at my rental, like I could go do it in the middle of the day. And I love that. I think, you know, working with clients too, maybe you can't give them an immediate response to a text, but I like being available. And yeah. So I think that's super important, especially for buyers, of course, that like, you are available. So I like the flexibility of not having to be somewhere um, to the people who do it part time, like good on you. I, I just don't think I would have been able to do that because I would have been like just constantly thinking about the text that's probably sitting there that I shouldn't be answering. Granted, a lot of people would just answer it, but like I would have felt so guilty. So, yeah, I'm kind of like all or nothing kind of person. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what you've had a freaking bang in first 10 months, you know, that's like 16 in your first 10 months as an agent is like people dream of that. So what is the next 10 months, 12 months? What is the next five years? Any, any time parameter that you want to share, but like, what are your goals heading into the future? So I will credit like some of those 16 from referrals. You know, I didn't get all of them by myself, but that did come. We don't get anything (laughs) all by ourselves in this world. You take every, referrals are business that you earned. Right. So, but yeah. I just, that's my two (laughs) sets. Yeah. I do want to increase that. So yeah, the next 10 months, I would like to, like numbers wise goals, I would like an average of two transactions a month and match my W-2. I also want to be more selective of who I work with, like people that I get along with. Cause like I've been talking about this whole time. It's like, I get a lot of, well, I just like working with people who I get along with and I feel like I'm more confident and can help them best when I know that we're similar and we think similarly. So yeah, two transactions a month, meeting my W-2 income plus BAH. Okay, now that's not like on the tax roll, but all of it. And really increasing 
my referral network for sure. Like there's, you know, lots of people that I've met, but I want to be like the go-to for people. And I also want to network with like veterans who are close to military bases. Like probably I'll start off with like just Coast Guard. So, you know, there are big hubs of Coast Guard and Virginia and DC, places in Florida, San Diego. And so I'd like to really connect with a really amazing agent in each one of those spots and just pass clients along as they move and, and teach people about real estate as well. Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it. Back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. And your golden nugget that you uploaded is, well, I want you to explain what the golden nugget is and how it can help those that download it. So I'm a seasoned house hacker. Since I started investing, that's what I did. So as I'm building up my referrals, hopefully military connected, because there's so many Navy, Marine, Coast Guard, active duty and veterans here in Pensacola, I would like to share this house hacking calculator. It gives you graphs. It You could put in like all the expenses and it'll show you how beneficial house hacking can be. And that is what really helped me step off into the real estate investing world that allowed me to get out of being an active duty member and into real estate. So if other people are listening to this, I hope they could use that to help them do the same if they so choose. Or if you are a veteran real estate agent and want to connect and build a referral network, please feel free to use that calculator and share with the active duty personnel in your area because it's just amazing. Yeah. I I like this idea a lot. I'm signing up for it right now because there, I mean, yeah, I like it because there's bigger pockets, of course, but then you have to have a subscription or if you want to do it for free, then you'll only get five and then you have to do a whole new email. So awesome. Okay. So people that are looking to house hack or invest in a duplex wherever in the country, like reach out, reach out to you, you, Tori. But before we're starting to wrap up here, before we get to the wrap up, is there anything that we didn't cover that you want to mention? I think, I mean, everyone who's listened to real estate podcasts have, you know, heard to use what works for you best. And I'll just reiterate that, like, do a true evaluation of who you are, the people that you could connect with. If you do right by people, it will pay out in the end and, you know, have fun with it. Like if you do a strategy that you absolutely hate, like one, you're not going to be confident with it at all. Right. So you're going to look a mess. So yeah, find what you're good at and get even better at it and connect with people and show them how you can help them. Fuck yeah. Okay. Okay. Tori, wrap up question number one. What is your favorite app or tool? Which might be reiterating because I've already asked you yeah. kind of that ish. <laughs> That's okay. I did save another one for that. Oh, um, perfect. I mentioned like, the county website. Like, get your data straight, you know, especially the basics because people will ask you and you have to know that stuff. But an app that I had kind of recently discovered is called Rigid. So I'm sure everyone's been out of property and been like, is that fence or is that tree on the property line? And so this app will show you and it'll give you so much data on the lot itself. So put it in an address. It'll show you the outline. It'll show you when it was last bought. So that's just a really user-friendly tool slash app that will make you look super impressive when you're on the property with your client. What? That is legit. Okay, I'm trying to yeah. find it now. What's R-E-G-R-I-D. the color of the logo? R-I-D. Oh, wait. It's R-E-G-R-I-D. E-G. Okay. Dang, that is I so helpful free. because, yeah, the amount of questions that I've been asked, I'm like, I don't know. We'll have to. Sorry, I okay. called it rigid. Well, it's regret. <laughs> okay. I do that in my okay. head all the time. Yeah. So, with Xavier. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Ali. Love you. Happy. <laughs> safe, safe, safe. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, it's 2024. What events are you going to this year? Oh, so I'll be seeing you ladies at the Real Estate Rockstar meetup in Ooh. Austin. I'm also thinking of going to the Ninja Selling 
meet up for veterans so that I could build up my referral pool with, you know, those at those bigger bases that I was mentioning earlier. So that's in Colorado. So I haven't booked that, but I'm hoping to. We would love it if you would come to Tom Ferry with us too. So we have rock stars in March, but we have Tom Ferry Summit in August. And word on the street is that Allie's got the hookup with tickets. So <laughs> she knows that because your... she read my email yesterday. <laughs> Shelby was in my email yesterday. <laughs> oh, yesterday, Allie and I Zoomed for an hour where all she did was she gave me her email login and I shared my screen and I just went her through her emails mm-hmm. and helped her. Because she was on vacation. It's not because, you know, and we were just getting a system down, okay. you know? So it was fun. Well, we can yeah, get anyway. it if you ever want it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I actually fucking love it. Like, I am all about the hyper organization coming up with, like, the system of keeping everything in the place that needs to be and, like, quick links. And I already have some notes that I'm going to send you after the Thank fact you. for some, some tools and systems and stuff, but we're, we're bringing it back in. Okay. For how can we, so I mentioned it a couple times before the referrals, like let's, let's partner up, let's help people. Let's, you know, make their PCS move or not PCS move just better. They're so, I think 80% of people don't trust real estate agents. And I want to do my best to try to bring that number down <laughs> because there are a lot of good ones out there. And it makes me mad that so many people are making us look bad. So I want to connect with the people that are wanting to help others. So if that sounds like you reach out to me and we'll partner up. Yes, 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 yes. And how can people reach out to you? What is the best method? So Facebook, Tori Borges, T-O-R-I-B-O-R-G-E-S. Instagram, Real Tori. So people are like, oh, the Real Tori. I'm like, no, Real Tori with an I, underscore <laughs> Rose, R-O-S-E. <laughs> That's cute. I tried so I hard that. and I was like, oh, gosh. Failed. And each time you're like, gosh, everyone just get it. I'm so clever. Gosh. Love it. Everyone go and follow Tori. And of course, in case you missed it, her all of those links will be in the show notes for quick access for following and liking everything that she does on the internet and sending her all the referrals and being the referral partner, all the things. And while you're on the internet, if you want to hang out with me and Allie, we are also there. Allie the Agent and the Shelby Show on the gram. As always, we want to hear from you. And we love hearing from you. It's so great when you guys are like getting like chattier and chattier. Please don't stop. Ali and I love it. And otherwise, guys, Tori, thank you so much for coming on the show and hanging out with us. Like 16 deals in your first 10 months. Ali and I are so excited to see what the fucking future holds for you. We think you're awesome. We can't wait to hang out in person in Real Estate Rock Stars Mastermind in just a little over a month. And otherwise, listeners, thanks for listening and be a bro and share this show. Her, she has a phone number. Well, you know what? Shit. I ruined it. Obviously, she has a phone number. I love that. The crap, Ali, I just said your line. I'm marking that clip. Rem, cut out that line. I don't love that. Wait, Shelby, did you have any other questions about marketing it? Rem, I'm Anyone? fucking up here. Anyone? <laughs> Let me say that again. No, no one. It's okay if you just, just... waste your time. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.